I'm David Tower and welcome to the Theories of Everything program. Viewers, this is another in our update series in which we review some of the major big picture programs that we've previously covered. Programs such as Are We Living in a Matrix? Now this particular topic has been one of the most controversial but also one of the most exciting cutting edge topics that we've attempted to cover in our series. Now the reason for this is twofold. First of all, there have been and continue to be major developments in this area basically relating to the understanding of information theory um, and also in relation to understanding new forms of techniques for solving problems such as cellular automata. But again we review this particular topic because it's current in the social sense. There is also the next sequel to The Matrix being played at the moment, Matrix Reloaded. And that in itself brings up some interesting issues. The issues are, first of all, that we are already looking at films which are themselves simulations of real life in a sense. Even if they, if they are imaginary in many ways, they're still simulated uh, processes that are being discovered on the screen. But we're actually making a simulation about a simulation. So that's sort of an, an additional step in this process. And that causes a lot of social discussion. People discuss living in a matrix. It becomes a common sort of paradigm in which everyone gets involved. And that's also a good thing. It's a good thing because it exercises the philosophical aspects. It pushes the philosophical boundaries of our discussions. So let's have a quick look at uh, some of the elements in the Matrix Reloaded. Um, there are three major ones. There's the Matrix concept itself, which is very potent, uh, which wasn't further developed in this, particular pro in this particular sequel. It was primarily fleshed out in the initial Matrix. Um, but it also the, uh, the film focuses on the agents themselves, the, uh, the bad guys, um, Mr. Smith and, uh, and his clones. It also focuses somewhat on the machines that are controlling the, uh, the matrix, that are doing the, that have initiated it and control it. So let's have a look at those two elements first. We'll look at the possibility of, of sentient computer programs that manifest in the form of, of, uh, of clones, if you like, and also the possibility that machines may have enough intelligence to run something like the matrix. Well first of all if we look at the clone concept already and currently uh, there are programs that uh, might, be called, might be called agents. We've discussed them a number of times. They're, they are empowered if you like to fulfill goals but they're given quite a bit of freedom in the way that they solve those particular goals or problems or meet those goals. In other words, they're endowed with artificial intelligence. They're not normal step-by-step -step programs where every contingency is pre-calculated and programmed. They, they're a much broader class of programs and they are capable of adapting and learning by experience as they go about their work. And some of their work is becoming extremely critical to humans. Um, critical mission software, if you like, or mission critical decisions are being made in areas such as air traffic control, um, and uh, weather forecasting. Now both these areas are quite vital to humans and vital to their well-being and they're being entrusted if you like to programs in the form of these intelligent uh, agents which are quite mobile, free in a sense to to roam the internet, co-op resources uh, and actually copy or clone other agents to assist them in that process. They're supposed to eventually return um, to their source of origin, to the uh, particular uh, website or wherever that they were originated in and where they're supposed to be deleted. But of course, like space junk, it doesn't always happen like that. Some of these sentient agents, mobile agents, whatever they're called, do escape, if you like, and roam, and roam around the internet. There's just been a conference on developing higher levels of security to, uh, to counteract this possibility. The possibility, in fact, of rogue software agents, 
rogue intelligent agents roaming around the internet, cyberspace, our space, which we'll increasingly live in as time goes by. So that's the first aspect of the film. In other words, the clones in the film are not so far removed from the clones that we're developing, the agents that we're developing currently. And they can be both bad and good. Bad if they uh, um, um, intrude into areas that they're not supposed to intrude into, for example, into other applications. Let's come quickly then to the intelligent machines. That's been also a topic that we've covered broadly in previous programs. It's really based around what an, another form of artificial intelligence called um, evolutionary algorithms. These are programs that again form the basis and also with agents as well to learn by experience and uh, perform improved strategies for achieving goals.